Okay, folks, we are back, and uh, this is still section 5-7. This is video number five. We're talking about the hypergeometric distribution. And I wanted to try to go into some fair amount of detail with example 5-33. In my previous video, I discussed, you know, the, the problem here, what's going on. So now let me do my, uh, let me show you my, my notes my lecture notes where I work through this problem in quite a bit of detail. Okay, so here we are. Example 5-33. We've got the lot of 12 tanks. Three of those tanks are checked for leaks. Therefore, using our formula, n is equal to 3. If you have even one, one or more, have a leak, the lot is rejected. Okay? So now, the question does require some, some thought. Okay, the question says... Find the probability that the lot will be rejected. Now the lot is these, the 12 tanks. Find the probability that the lot will be rejected if in actual true facts, if it is it absolutely true that there are actually three bad tanks in the lot. So out of the 12, let's suppose there's three of them that somehow, some way, you know they're bad. And again, this is a metaphor for a problem, okay? Isn't it? kind of a unrealistic problem but it's a metaphor okay okay so now here's our solution this the lot is rejected if at least one tank is bad so the easiest way of approaching this is to find the probability that zero are bad if you find the probability that zero are bad then you subtract that probability from one and that tells you the probability that more than zero are bad okay so looking back at the, you know, applying it to the formula, it's a little bit hard for me to bounce back and forth. So just look at your book here. You have the two categories, A and B. A is being defective. There's three of those. B is not defective. There's nine of those. Therefore, A plus B, the total population is 12. N is the sample size. That's the three that we're going to select out of the 12. N is the sample size. So that's three. And X is, the, what is it that we're looking for? We, we want to know what's the probability of having zero defects. So my advice is write these things out in detail like this. It will help you understand it. So the probability of X is the probability of zero defects. Here's the formula. Write out the formula. I am going to be very unhappy with you if I get homework or tests and you are not writing out formulas. So you write out the formulas, okay? And here's the explanation for it. This guy right up here, that's the probability of picking zero defects, zero defects out of the three that we know are defects. This is the probability of picking three out of the nine that are not defective. So you see what's going on? I got my A and I got my B. A is the category or the type of it is defective. Th this is B. That's the nine guys that are not defective. Okay. So that's where we get the A corresponds to this. X corresponds to zero and minus X corresponds to three. So if, if zero are defective, that means that the rest of them are not defective. Now, that gives me the numerator. So the, in order to get zero defects, there's three choose zero ways of doing that. In order to get the non-defective, there's nine choose three ways of doing that. Well, this guy right here, three choose zero, I don't have time to write it out for you, but or maybe I do. Let me see if I can do that. Let me pause this for one second. I'm going to pause it. Okay, so here we are. This is the uh, this is the normal formula. There's the standard formula for for combinatorics or combinations. Okay, it's n choose r, and here's the formula. Right, you've seen this several times. Okay, so if we have like in this particular problem, we have three. We have n choose r. In this problem, we're looking at one of the one of the uh, factors that we're looking at is three choose zero. Well, whenever you have 
you know any number here n choose 0 n choose 0 is always going to be equal to 1 so let's see if you can think about this write it down on a piece of paper and you'll see what I'm talking about so whatever n happens to be that's n factorial is on top and then down here you have n subtract r n subtract r so n subtract 0 is just is just n right so it's n factorial over n factorial over here the r in you know if, if, if r is 0 this becomes 0 factorial so what do you have you have n factorial on top you have n factorial times 0 factorial well 0 factorial is 1 so you have n factorial over n factorial so this whole right hand side reduces down to 1 so that tells me the following Okay, so that tells me when I bounce back here to this exact problem that I written out, this first term here, 3 choose 0, that's going to be 1. All right, and then also on the top I have 9 choose 3. So as I say here, that's picking 3 from the non-defective group. There's, no, there's 9 that are not defective. So when I pick 3, how many ways can I pick three out of three non-defectives from the non-defective pile? If you think about it as piles, like you got a pile of defectives and you got a pile of non-defectives. So how can I pick three from the non-defective? There's nine of them, so I choose three of them. Well, nine choose three, if you work it out on that formula that I just showed you, that's 84. So the numerator is really simple. It's one times 84. The bottom, that's the total number of ways to pick three tanks out of the 12. So that's 12 choose three. How many ways can I do that? Well, crank out the formula, 12 choose three. You know, that's 12 factorial on top. It's 12 minus three factorial on the bottom times three factorial on the bottom. So crank it out and this is what you get, 220. So it all works out to be 0.382. So that's the probability of getting zero defects. The probability of getting more than zero would be, you know, that's the at least one, in other words. So one, at least one is more than zero. That's one subtract this number right here. And that gives you 0.618. And that's the desired answer. Okay. And then what I sometimes do on this, and I, I highly recommend this. When I have a complex problem like this, where I have a lot of different things that I have to calculate, I'll, I'll have it on a separate piece of paper. I'll call it a dictionary. So every one of these terms up here, I will write down on my separate piece of paper. I call it a dictionary, and I crank it out. That way I don't have to make a big mess on my main page. So 3 choose 0, boom, here it is. 9 choose 3, that's 9 factorial over 3 factorial times 9 minus 3 factorial, blah, blah, blah. I work it out. Same thing here. 12 choose 3, I write it out, okay? So I recommend that as a technique. And then here's the formula here that I write down for myself, for my own benefit. Okay, so we've bounced back here to the book. I hope that helped explain that problem to you. Work it out, put it in your own language, your own words. If it takes you 20 pages to do it, that's fine, that's good. That shows that you're really understanding it, okay? So there's a, the final answer is there's a 61% chance that the lot will be rejected, uh, assuming that three of the 12 tanks are defective. Okay. All right. The next, next uh, topic is the geometric uh, distribution. Kind of an easy one, really. This is where you have an experiment with two outcomes, and it's repeated until you get a successful outcome. So you flip a coin. I'm going to flip this coin until I get ahead. I'm going to play Russian roulette, and I'm going to keep playing until I blow my brains out. That's getting the success, okay? Uh, you can roll a die until we get a six. In these cases, our successes would come on the nth trial. Nth is just what, which trial was it? Was it the first, the second, the third, the fourth, whatever it happens to be, okay? So a geometric experiment is a probability experiment, and here's the requirements. You have the two outcomes, either success or failure. They're independent probability of success is the same the same thing that we've had before and then here but here's the one difference the experiment continues until a success is obtained so here we go here's here's the formula for it and I think we can figure this out P is the probability of a success on each trial and it never changes N is the number of the trial at which the first success occurs well when, once you have the first success you stop playing right 
so the probability of getting the first success on the nth trial so like you want the nth trial to, you know probability of getting it on the 10th trial on the 12th trial whatever it happens to be is p the pro that's the probability of success on that nth trial times the probability of failure one minus p that's the probability of failure well the failure has to occur n minus one times if you have a success on the 12th trial that means you had a failure on the first 11 trials so where does that 11 comes from that comes from n minus one it's 12 take away one it gives you 11 trials so if you had a failure one minus p times well one minus p times one minus p times one minus t p do that 11 times that th those are your failures that you had until you came up with the one success so here's an example rolling a die you roll the die find the probability of getting the first two on the third roll okay to get a two on the third roll the first two rolls must be any other number so you have to it's not a two not a two boom now there's a two so if you did it one of those little t tree diagrams it would help uh, help explain this i think it might be worth your time to do that so it all boils down to is it's not a success not a success not you keep on going not success not success not success you keep on going until you finally get a success and then that's the formula okay so this is the not success they, they he wrote it in a different he, he switched the order but that's okay because multiplication is commutative you can do it in any order you want so not a success not a success not a success finally a success but until we got to that success we had n minus one failures okay so there there's that type this is a let's see let's take a look at this one real quick okay 42 percent have type a you pick four people at random find a probability that the fourth person is the first one that's selected with type a so if it's 42 percent chance of having type a that's a 42 percent chance of a, of a success failure is one subtract 42 percent and if, and if you you want to know what the, if the fourth person is the one that has type a so four take away one that's so there's there's a failure there's a failure there's a failure there's three failures and finally you get a success so you multiply them all together and boom there you go okay so now this is very handy if you're not looking at this you are making a huge mistake this author is really good at giving you summaries here's a summary of all of the discrete distributions that we've dealt with you know, I've told you before, I strongly recommend a three ring notebook. Here's an example of why. If you just take this one page here and printed it out and put it in your in your three ring notebook under the tab of, of chapter five, this would be a big, big help. It would help you find everything you need to know. OK, so this is a nice summary. I'm not going to read it to you for obvious reasons. I strongly urge you print this out and make sure you understand it. Try to explain it to a, you know, if you have an intelligent eighth grader in your family explain it to him or explain it to your dog I mean explain it to anybody you just gotta try to explain it so that you know that you understand it okay all right as always I recommend looking at the applying the concepts I look at I recommend looking at the exercises the homework is the chapter quiz okay all right so that's this is the last video for chapter five and um, uh, good luck I uh, hope I was of some value in these videos thank